Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church on this fifth Sunday in Lent. Um, As always, I have a few announcements. Uh, One, I apologize. I don't, my voice isn't quite as strong as it normally is. I don't know if that's sinuses or what, but if I sound a little different, I apologize for that. Um, But I do have some church announcements. Um, We're quickly moving. Next Sunday is already Palm Sunday, and then we're we're into Holy Week. Um, So we will be having a Monday Thursday service here uh, on April 14th at 7 o'clock. That's a, I, I always enjoy that service. That's with Holy Communion. And also, uh, at the end of the service, we strip the altar. So I always uh, find that very powerful. And it connects to the humiliation that Jesus was put under uh, when he was um, arrested and then crucified. And then on the 15th at 7 o'clock will be our Good, uh, good Friday service. A few other things this week, um, <clears throat> our Bible study will be meeting uh, at, from 10 to 11.30. Uh, we'll be in Genesis chapters 7 and 8, uh, and it's the first Thursday of the month. So if anybody's free, um, we'll go out for lunch. So this Thursday will be our, our lunch day. A um, couple other things going on. Um, <clears throat> we've been talking about it for a while, but we have adopted a road. So that road cleanup will be on Saturday, April 23rd at 9 a.m. There is a sign-up sheet somewhere. It's circulating. All right. Okay. I knew it was circulating in Sunday school. I'm glad. So um, if you're able to help with that, if you could sign up, um, we'd appreciate that. So that that should be a fun day and and hopefully good weather. Um, I think... Just a couple other things I wanted to, oh, flowers. Um, We're taking uh, orders for uh, Easter lilies, tulips, daffodils, and hyacinths. Uh, So if you'd like to place an order for Easter flowers, uh, please see uh, Gina Wolf. And her contact information is in the bulletin. Um, So just a couple other things I wanted to bring up. We've had a couple... Uh, members who've been generous and made some donations. So one thing we now have are uh, white acolyte robes. So uh, Cole is the first one to to wear it um, this time. So um, and it they are a little complicated to put on. So for future acolytes, I'll I'll make sure I help you make um, put those on. But we have uh, acolyte robes. Uh, another donation I want to bring up, because it's something I really enjoyed, uh, in the library, one of our members purchased uh, on DVD the first two seasons of the show, The Chosen. And I, I don't know if anybody's heard of this um, series or not, but I just loved it. So it goes through, it goes through the Gospels. Now, if you borrow it, just a, a few notes you may want to watch it with closed captions just to make sure you don't miss anything. Half of the series is fictional. So what they do is they really go through um, like some of the backstories of the disciples. So it's, I find it believable, um, respectful. I didn't find anything like heretical. Um, there's a couple things that might not have happened exactly the way they show it, but it's not, nothing heretical. Um, And then the first episode is probably the most intense. So that one's probably the darkest, just to give you a heads up. But it's still, there's no bad language, um, you know, no no nudity, nothing like that. Um, uh, Very little violence, and that's not, nothing, nothing graphic. So it's a pretty clean show. Um, so I highly, highly recommend it. Like I said, it goes through the Gospels, and, and when they go through the biblical accounts, I have found it to be very, um, very accurate. But then again, the other parts of the show are completely fictional. So I'll just give you a heads up. So that's in our library, and like I say, I, 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 th- I think you'll enjoy it. It's a really, really neat show. Um, and it's, ne- it's crowdfunded. The production value is very high, but it was made by just donations. So they're working on a third season now and raising money for 
a fourth season. But I just wanted to bring up those donations. And um, the other thing we have going on is a book club. There's at least uh, one more copy of the book here at the church. And that's going to take place uh, Friday, April 29th. And um, we'll do dinner, pizza, and drinks and discuss the book. So that should be a lot of fun as well. Oh, and just prayer list updates. Last week I was asking prayers uh, for two members who were going in for back surgery on the same day, day Jean uh, Struherick and Sharon Strine. Uh, both surgeries went as planned. They are both home now and doing well. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll see them in the near future. But I just want to let you know that prayers were answered and um, they are doing well. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Yeah. I'm having a procedure on Tuesday at 11 o'clock at uh, Meredith and Robin Williams. Okay, so let me write that down. Break up a kidney stone. Okay. So you're, um, Meredith, is it this Tuesday or next Tuesday? The ele April 11th. The 5th, April 5th, at 11 o'clock. Okay. April 5th, okay. So please keep Kenneth Freshour in your prayers for his procedure this Tuesday. And yes? I have tickets for empty bowls if anybody has interested. Okay, so Sharon uh, Steger has tickets for empty bowls. I did read that announcement. So that's um, a local fundraiser for... Um, well, it fights hunger, right? It's a hunger ministry. It supports the Middletown Food Bank and Middletown Valley People Helping People. Okay, good. Middletown um, Food Bank and uh, Mer Middletown People Helping People. So, so you do have tickets for that. And that's on May 3rd um, at <clears throat> the high school, right? <coughs> yep, at Middletown <laughs> High School. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay, now we, we now prepare our hearts um, for worship with the prelude. I invite the congregation to please rise. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, <clears throat> we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, <clears throat> we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have loved, loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. <clears throat> and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> o God, Father in heaven, have mercy on us. O Son of God, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. <clears throat> and 
let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Thanks be to God. Um, anyway, please read responsibly Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Those fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out being carrying the sea will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second le lesson is from Philippians chapter 3, verses <clears throat> 4b through 14. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surprising value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attend the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have reached, already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to do what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Here in the second lesson. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to please rise for the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. 
Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. <clears throat> the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her, <clears throat> leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> and let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> our first lesson says, Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. All of our lessons for today focus on the future and on the fact that God has promised a better future for the faithful. And as human beings, we all know what it's like to be excited over a future event. Most of us can remember what it was like as a child being excited for Christmas or our birthday. And even as adults, there are times in our lives when we, re we are really looking forward to a future event. In the Christian church, there's a great deal of debate on how long a pastor should stay at a congregation. I've heard pastors and lay people argue that it is good for a pastor to stay at one congregation for a long time, meaning possibly 20 or, or 30 years. And I've heard pastors and lay people say that a pastor should remain at a congregation for a short amount of time. So in denominations where the bishop has the authority to reassign pastors, some of those bishops will reassign as quickly as four or five years. So some it's really quick. Now in the Lutheran Church, I've often heard pastors and some lay people say that a pastor should only remain about 10 years in one congregation. Ten years is what I typically hear from our denomination. Well, again, this is a debate that's been going on in the Christian church for longer than I have been alive. And each side of the issue has several reasons why they believe it's good for a pastor to stay in a congregation for a long time, or why they think a shorter ministry is better. Well, for the side that believes a pastor should not stay at a congregation for more than 10 years, one of the reasons they hold this belief is because they feel that both pastors and congregations need to be able to look forward to something new. That's one of the arguments. They say that pastors can become comfortable and they can become stale. So the pastor for himself or herself needs that change in order to stay fresh and excited. They need something new. And the belief is that a congregation needs that feeling as well. It is exciting when a congregation is calling a new pastor. And that change can re-energize a congregation. It can make them want to try something new or maybe bring back an old tradition. Either way, either way, uh, the future, when, when a church is, is starting with a new pastor, it, makes the, it, it shows that the future is filled with opportunity. And when we feel like the future is filled with opportunity, people tend to be 
excited. The season of Lent is quickly coming to an end. And in this season, we are called to focus on a problem in our world that has existed since Adam and Eve. And that would, of course, be sin. And sin is not a topic we should take lightly. And as we all know, our world is filled with sinful behavior. At the same time, both God and the church wants us to know that we do not have to find ourselves in a sinful existence. That God has fulfilled his promise to do a new thing, a thing that, will, that we will soon be celebrating during Holy Week and Easter. And as long as we believe in God's promises, as long as we commit ourselves to becoming his followers, his disciples, we have a future ahead of us that should make us very excited. There are many events in life that should make us excited. Christmas, birthdays, a new pastor, a new job, retirement, the birth, a birth in the family, and the list goes on. But nothing in this world can compare to the future that God has promised us in his kingdom. And we should be ecstatic about the future that awaits us. <clears throat> in our first lesson for today, God is trying to get both the Israelites, who will soon be returning home after being ex exiled in the Bible, to look forward to their future. And this is recorded, too, because God is also trying to get all future generations excited about the new thing he is doing, about their future. Well, the prophet informs the people that God has delivered Israel from their oppression in the past and that God continues to hear their cries and that he will rescue them again. The prophet reminds the people how God opened a path in the sea and how God overthrew chariots, horses, and an army. Isaiah writes, thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. The prophet then reminds them that God guided them in the wilderness and gave them water to drink. The message God has for the people is, do not worry. Trust in me. Continue to remember all that I have already done for you. And know, and know that I am about to do a new thing. God knows that when people turn from him, they start to worry. They start to fight with each other over resources. They become irritable and discontent. And they always turn to sinful behavior. But that's not what God wants from his creation. Instead, God wants us to know his peace and his generosity. God wants something better for us. And Holy Week and Easter shows us the kind of life and future that God wants us to experience. Well, our psalm for today was probably written after the Israelites returned home. And now, now they are looking forward to the future. They still have some concerns about their future. They ask God to restore their fortunes. But overall, they feel more confident that better days are ahead. And they declare, those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. With Psalm 126, we are reminded that God does bless us here on earth. But as we are taught, taught in our other lessons, an even better future awaits us than what lies here on this earth. Our second lesson teaches us that it can appear to us that we have it all in life. 
And yet what we have cannot compare to the future that God has in store for us. St. Paul writes, <clears throat> If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. I circumcised on the eighth day a member of the people of Israel, the tr of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Now, St. Paul is not saying that he was living a sinless life. That's not his point here. Instead, he is saying that he lived a blameless life in his devotion to Judaism. And in the eyes of his peers, in the eyes of his peers, he was doing everything right. And from a human point of view, he had everything going for him. But then Jesus got in his way. And that happens. Jesus often gets in our way. And when that happened, Paul realized what he was missing. His life was not as perfect as he thought. He was not as righteous as he thought. And God's love was greater than he realized. So Paul walked away from his old life. He said, but this one thing I do, forgetting about what lies behind and straining for what, but straining for forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. St. Paul left behind a comfortable life. A life where it seemed like he had everything going for him. Because he, he left that life behind because he knew that the future that awaits those who place their faith in Jesus Christ is greater than anything this world has to offer. And he did not only want this future for himself, but he wanted it for everybody. He knew how great this future was. So he set out. To, send, to spread this message throughout the world. You know, a lot of pastors remind me a little of St. Paul. There are basically two kinds of pastors. I'm, I'm what I consider myself what's called a pipeliner, which is someone who goes from college straight to seminary. Now, I did have two years in between, so I'm, I, I say I'm basically a pipeliner, close enough. The other kind of pastor is what is called second career, or I've met some that are even third career. And I enjoy talking to those pastors and hearing about the life they left behind. Many of those second career pastors left behind six-figure careers in order to become a pastor. From an earthly point of view, they had it all. But they realized when they heard God's call, and for some of them it took a while to answer that call, but they eventually came to realize it was, imp it was important that they needed to press toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ. Now, I am not saying that everyone has to become a pastor. That's not my point. But we do not want to be consumed by the concerns of this world. And we do not want to ignore the call of Jesus Christ and the future that he is offering us in his kingdom. We all, no matter what we do in life, we all need to be focused on our Lord and Savior and the future that he is promising us. Well, finally, in our gospel lesson, we find two disciples one is a man who could have been one of the future leaders of the church. The other is a woman who may or may not have been a leader, I'm sorry, who may not have been a leader in the church, but she gave us a powerful example to follow. We are told that Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet. 
This upset the disciple Judas. And he said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? Now, Jesus, knowing what was in Judas's heart, knew that Je Judas did not, was not concerned about the poor, but instead he was more concerned about lining his own pockets. So Jesus defended Mary <clears throat> and said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You, are, you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Now, did Mary make the best use of her resources? Did Mary make the best use of her resources? I would argue that she did. Others would say she did not. But no matter what side of the argument you may come down on, what is important to Jesus is that Mary wanted to serve her Lord and Savior. That was what was in her heart. She wanted to follow and serve Jesus. Now, if I am wrong, and Mary did not make the best use of her resources, then this is just one of many examples in the Bible where we see that God knows that none of us are perfect disciples, and yet he continues to love and accept us. It's, so it's in our heart that matters to God. Again, God is doing a new thing, and that new thing is saving sinners. Lent is a time to remember our sin, but at the same time we are taught that we should not, be, that we should not dwell in the past, but instead look to the future. As I was saying earlier, we all know what it's like to look forward to, an, to a future event. And Holy Week and Easter should help us to remember that nothing on this earth can compare to a future in God's eternal kingdom. Sometimes we will not feel good about our situation in, on earth like the Israelites in our first lesson. And other times we will be like the Israelites in Psalm 126, filled with hope for the near future. But in good and bad times, we must never lose sight on the new thing that God has done. That through the cross and the empty tomb, God has opened the doors to paradise for a sinful creation. Amen.
I invite the congregation to please rise. With the whole church, we confess our faith using the words from the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, some forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Drawn closer to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Do a new thing in the church. Free us from paradigms that no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. We also pray for your blessing to be upon all the congregations in the Frederick Conference. And this week we especially pray for our congregation, St. Mark's Lutheran Church here in Wolfsville, and for all of our members. Merciful God. 
Do a new thing for creation. Rescue lands from famine and disease. Send aid to places rebuilding after earthquakes and storms. Support the work of scientists, conservationists, and all who just seek to preserve the goodness of creation. Merciful God. Do a new thing in our world. We pray for the end of war and violence throughout the world. We ask that peaceful solutions can be found to end the vi violent conflicts and nations such as Ukraine, Ethiopia, Yemen, Syria, Sudan, Myanmar, and anywhere in the world that is experiencing war. We especially pray for the conversion of those who are responsible for the violence, for healing and strength for the victims, and comfort for those who mourn the loss of family members and friends. Merciful God. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are, who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness, and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick. And we especially pray for those who are known to this congregation in need of your healing presence. For Hilda, Susan, Irene, Mike, Stephanie, Jim, Wayne, Sharon, Jean, Charles, Elizabeth, Kenneth, and all those we now name aloud are in our hearts. Catalina. Merciful God. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks again for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. What's that? Okay. The body of Christ given for you. And the body of Christ given for you. 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 The 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Benjamin, may God bless you and may you continue to grow in God's love and grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alex, may God bless you and may you continue to grow in God's love and grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Samuel, may God bless you and may you continue to grow in God's love and grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Marie, may God bless you and may you continue to grow in God's love and grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 given for you the blood of Christ shed for you I invite the congregation to please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, 
You have done great things for us, and we rejoice in this bread and cup you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and up open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> you are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you this day and always. Amen.